There's no such thing as first class and the safest deck for the wealthiest in Titanic. Even the world's wealthiest person aboard Titanic went down and died in the most famous ship. Meet John Jacob Astor, the richest man in the world who died on the Titanic. After the Titanic hit the iceberg and sank in 1912, it killed more than 1,500 passengers, including some of the world's most wealthy and famous people. However, there was no victim aboard the ship who had more money than John Jacob Astor IV. Jacob was reportedly a member of the famous Astor family, the world's famous family in American history at the time. This family was considered an American royalty, especially in New York's organized society. 110 years since one of the greatest tragedies in history, let's take a look back at what John Jacob Astor's luxurious life was like before he became one of the richest people he met on board the renowned ship. On July 13, 1864, John Jacob Astor IV was born into one of the most affluent families across the globe. John Astor IV was born to William Backhouse Astor Jr. and Caroline Webster Schirmerhorn Astor in New York. At that time, the Astor surname was already well-respected in high society and was dubbed as one of the richest families in the world. In fact, his family's fortune was one of the world's largest. John was the youngest of five children and was the only son of William Backhouse Astor Jr. William was a renowned racehorse breeder and owner, a famous collector, and one of the richest businessmen while John Jacob's mother was a socialite named Caroline Webster Lena Schirmerhorn. Early in his childhood, the Astor family was living in a Victorian or colonial-style mansion in New Jersey. This house was later owned by Lance Clark, who was the executive chairman of Clark Shoes. In 2001, Mr. Clark's daughter, Mariah Clark, sold the property. John was also famous for consistently catching the interest of the media. In fact, the press called him Jack Ass. He became a successful businessman in America and one of the famous real estate developers and investors. In addition, Jack was also a novelist, inventor, and a lieutenant colonel during the Spanish-American War. To give a little background about who the Astor family is, in the early 1900s, the original John Jacob Astor came to live in the United States for good after traveling from a small village in Germany to make a name for himself. Jacob began working, making money from his fur trading businesses. However, his massive wealth started coming in when he entered the world of real estate. During this time, Jacob purchased a plot of land in the middle of Manhattan, modern-day Times Square. A few years later, Astor ended up buying the land all around Manhattan. He then became one of the richest men in the world and created a dynasty. Jacob, who was John Jacob IV's great-grandfather, made his first millions from trading furs from Canada to wealthy and privileged women living in New York City. He later on used his money to purchase vast quantities of real estate across New York City. With this fortune, John was born and raised with a golden spoon in his mouth. He received an education at the finest schools and educational institutions across the United States. He was an heir to the family fortune. John first attended St. Paul's School in Concord. Later on, he went to Harvard University. However, at the time of writing, there is still no record of him graduating. After he finished school, John traveled abroad for a few years before he returned to New York City to take up the family business, which was real estate. In 1893, John had a feud with his cousin, William Waldorf Astor. With an intent to annoy John, William built the Waldorf Hotel on the corner of 5th Avenue and 33rd Street. However, as expected, John didn't like what William did. They started competing against each other. John then built a competitive hotel in 1897 on the adjacent corner in retaliation and reportedly named it the Astoria Hotel. But the feud between the two didn't last long. Both William and John decided that it was best for them to join both of their hotels as it would be a smart business decision. In the end, the cousins built a 300-foot marble corridor between their hotel and the prominent Waldorf Astoria Hotel was finally born. After a few decades, the Waldorf Astoria Hotel became a symbol of wealth, class, and luxury in New York City. Many rich people in the United States often visited the said hotel. It was tagged as one of the best hotels in the United States 
and even in the world at that time. However, in 1928, the Waldorf Astoria Hotel had to shut down and was demolished. It was then built again farther uptown in 1931 after John died. In 1904, Astor opened the St. Regis, which the New York Times called the finest hotel in America at the time. Astor aimed to make the hotel technologically advanced, ensuring each room had a telephone. Some historians call the hotel Astor's greatest achievement. According to Biography.com, the St. Regis is still open today. Like I said earlier, John was also famous for being a novelist. Aside from his hectic schedule, developing some of New York's finest hotels, John always had time for his hobbies, such as writing. In fact, in 1894, John reportedly published his first and only science fiction novel titled Journey in Other Worlds. According to the Amazon synopsis, the Journey in Other Worlds races far ahead of the 19th century to imagine what life would be like in the year 2000. At the beginning of the 21st century, Earth was effectively a corporate technocracy with big business using incredible advances in science to improve life on the planet as a whole, seeking other planets habitable for the growing human population. The spaceship Callisto, powered by an anti-gravitational force known as Apergy, embarks on a momentous tour of the solar system. Not only that, John was also known for inventing a vibratory disintegrator, which helped create a pneumatic road improver. He also made headlines because of his role in inventing a turbine engine. With regard to his personal life, in 1891, John married Ava Lowell Willing. The two later had two children together named Vincent and Alice. The couple immediately became famous in town. Many people looked at them as a perfect upper-class family. However, despite this, their marriage was largely unhappy. In 1901, Ava and John got divorced, which set John up for one of the biggest scandals in the country. The divorce scandal was really a big deal at that time that Jack was forced to remarry almost immediately to a much younger woman. John, at the age of 47, met 18-year-old Madeline Talmadge Force. The two fell in love quickly. In 1911, Madeline and John got married. However, their marriage made headlines, which prompted the married couple to decide to spend winter in Europe with hopes that the scandal would die down in their absence. However, the scandal over their relationship made its way onto the screens decades later after the Oscar-winning movie Titanic was released in 1997. In the movie, Rose and Jack talked about John and his pregnant wife to Jack. His little wifey there, Madeline, is my age and in delicate condition. See how she's trying to hide it? Quite the scandal, Rose told Jack in the movie. Going back, when Madeline got pregnant in 1912, the married couple decided to go back to New York. That's when John booked a luxurious room on the Titanic. At the time, John was hailed as one of the richest men in the world. That means he was the wealthiest aboard the Titanic. According to the reports, John's fortune was worth between 90 and $150 million when he boarded the Titanic, which would be worth between 2.6 and $4.5 billion today. However, there was no such thing as first class and the safest deck for the wealthiest in Titanic. Even the world's wealthiest person aboard the Titanic went down in that most famous ship. On April 14, 1912, the Titanic hit an iceberg. John calmly brought his wife to the second to last lifeboat. At the time the ship hit the iceberg, John was among the first few passengers who discovered that the ship was actually sinking. Upon discovery, he immediately woke his sleeping pregnant wife, Madeline, and told her calmly to get dressed in her warmest clothes and put all of her jewelry on her. John then took his wife, Madeline, to the deck and placed her in a lifeboat. However, Madeline didn't want to go and get separated from him. She clung to her loving and caring husband, telling him that she wanted to stay with him. However, John reportedly told Madeline, the sea is calm you'll be all right. You're in good hands. I'll see you in the morning. The next day, Madeline looked for her husband, but he was nowhere to be found. John was reportedly last seen on the deck and was holding a personalized pocket watch and was wearing a dinner suit. Despite John being the wealthiest person aboard Titanic and the richest man in the world, he chose to save others first before him. The war hero became a hero once again. Two weeks after the Titanic sank, 
John's body was recovered by a search team from Halifax, Canada. Among the 1,517 passengers who died on Titanic, only 333 bodies were ever found, and John Astor was among them. Reports revealed at that time that he was found on April 22nd and was identified because of his unique monogrammed initials on his jacket. His pocket watch also reportedly contained a solid gold watch engraved with the initials JJA. Following John's tragic passing, his son Vincent traveled to Halifax to claim his father's body. At that time, among the 333 bodies recovered, 116 were buried at sea due to a lack of embalming fluid on the McKay Bennett. Meanwhile, Astor's wife survived the shipwreck. She then gave birth to their son and named him after her hero husband, John Jacob. After John's death, the majority of his wealth went to Vincent, his son from his first marriage. He then donated the majority of it and became a philanthropist in New York City. John Jacob Astor VI also received a small portion of his father's fortune, while John's second child, his daughter Ava, was left a $10 million trust fund. Moreover, John's widow, Madeline, was left with a $5 million trust fund and an additional annual income of $500,000. Through the years, John's name and his reputation have survived despite the tragedy.